And we have good, that's, and he's not going to have a heart attack. Here's what we did and didn't do. We spent a morning, that's it, from breakfast to a late lunch. No field investigation whatsoever. I didn't send people out there. We didn't do interviews. We didn't do garbology, you know, stealing is trash, which, by the way, is an unbelievable investigative technique. We didn't do pretext. We didn't call up his family and say we're calling from the hospital and, you know, Rick's laying on a, a gurney who's his medical insurance company or any of that good stuff. We didn't use any government databases. We used what is available to civilians. I mean, well, connected civilians, but civilians. We use Gorilla Trace. We use Diogenes. We use something under development called Oink. <laughs> we started with the phone number. We got his name. We got his social security number. We got his date of birth. We got where he worked. We then took the social security number and ran that. And we got every name and every address associated with it. Which, and this, by the way, is a routine thing for investigators. It costs $1 to do. And we got every address he ever lived at, including a guy who was the name of a guy, Jeffrey Stanford, who was using his social security number. More information and more information and more information and addresses. In less than five minutes, we found his complete name, social security number, when he got it, where he got it, somebody else using it, date of birth, the addresses. Then we pulled Rick's credit report, which he signed a waiver for. And we got everywhere he banks and how much money he makes and all the employers he's ever shown and how quickly he pays his bills. And he pays them pretty damn quickly, which is good to know because he's taking me to dinner tonight. And we found out that he's shown as a property owner at his address. And we pulled the property record. And we pulled the property appraiser record, which said 89000 bucks. And we figured, no way, you know, not even in this economy, and we went to Zwillow, which is even better, and they gave us an appraisal of $174,284. And then we decided to take a look at the property, again, without leaving the desk. So we went, we got closer, and we got closer, and we got closer, and Rick was looking up at the saddle. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually the photo that we got off of his MySpace page. So that was legitimately obtained, and we found out what his apartment is like. And he lives in Florida, and remember that big parking lot. There's no public transportation, big parking lot. So he pulled his car and what he drives and who his insurance carrier is and running the condo address through Business Finder America. We got his company, and we ran him through Gorilla Trace, and we got 43 pages of stuff, every profile, every blog, every MySpace page. We pulled him through Zoom Info everywhere he ever worked, what he did at those places. We found, now there's something called Domain Finder where you can put in a name or an address. We found out he had a domain called Pornophiliac, <laughs> which, which was not up at the time. And stop right there, because I've heard all the jokes about getting it back up. <laughs> and, and we found rickdakin.com and bluekingstudios.com. And we went to the Wayback Machine, which is a great friend for investigators. And we found every single post and all the previous incarnations of his websites. And we found his Amazon.com author bio, which had everything he wrote and where he hangs out. And even, where the heck is it? Even where he has coffee for breakfast. Well, then it was accurate. This is two years old, by the way. And we found the books that he wrote, and we found, God bless him, one of the most comprehensive MySpace pages ever put up. Photos, 27 friends. Everywhere he went to school, the school for the, for the terminally whatever, and American University, and that he's in the middle of his master's program, and his companies. And for job, he writes, I own the damn thing. Thank you very much. And, and that he's single. He's a, an Aquarius. He's a graduate student. He's an author. Um, you know, what he's written, music, television, Rick's resume, which we found by going into a hidden directory, but that was fair. That his latest book is Geek Mafia. We found, I mean, how hard is it to interpret a web posting saying, up is downism and homophobic hate, Bush and Republicans are assholes. 
he's probably a Democrat. <laughs> Actually, we found out after reading an endless supply of posts, I mean, this guy must carry a laptop with him. He's, a, he's actually an anarchist, and that he didn't register his car for six months and he got in trouble. And these are the, and these are the podcasts that he downloads, so we know he's a lefty. And he listens to Air America, and we found one hilarious post called, Can't Sleep, Clown Will Eat Me. <laughs> so, so, so we know that he's either a Simpsons fan, or he spent too much time in Hungary, or as a kid he was frightened by a guy with a big red nose. And we found photos, which I have to tell you, the holy grail of investigators. If I'm going after you, I want to know what you look like. And more photos. Here he is, by the way, lockpicking at a previous con. <laughs> and all of his friends.